Former National Security Advisor for the Trump administration, Ambassador John Bolton, is here. And, Ambassador, it's great to have you. I just wonder, kind of bluntly, if Donald Trump is reelected, do you think that means the end of NATO as we know it now? Yeah, uh, yes, I do. I think he will withdraw. I, I think uh, you have to take uh, what he's saying is coming directly from uh, from from what he has long been saying privately and, and in some cases publicly. It, it's a little disturbing now to hear some Republicans saying, well, you know, he's he's just bargaining with NATO or this is just the way he talks. Uh, that That's not right. He, he has used this failure of uh, many members, a majority of NATO members, to spend 2% of their GDP on defense, as they all voluntarily committed to do in 2014, uh, not to strengthen NATO, but to help destroy it. It is true that after his criticisms, uh, more was spent by European members of, of NATO on defense. But that wasn't going to change his mind because there were a lot of other criticisms he had as well. So, uh, you know, it is, uh, I, I, was, I was there with him in the spring of 2018 at the uh, NATO summit in Brussels where he damn near did get out of NATO. He is serious about it. And whether you're a Trump supporter or a Trump opponent, uh, don't, don't think he's kidding about this one. Yeah, I, I noticed he doesn't mention that, you know, Germany is spending that percent of its GDP on defense now, something that, you know, is behind when they said they would get to it, but they are actually there. When he was talking about that conversation, with the well, world they're leader. not actually, not yet. But they're on track to be at two percent this year, I believe, right? No, they're not. They're not going to make it. Oh, okay. Well, they say that they are. That's well, the but, trouble. The Euro Europeans well, make the Europeans make it hard to make the case. The the case is, however, we're not doing this at a charity for the Europeans. We're, we're supporting NATO because it's a core American national interest to do it. And I think that's the case, frankly, that political leaders of both parties in this country have not made effectively over the past several decades. Yeah, well, I will note the German officials say that they are there. But, but on the point of what Trump is saying, he's recounting that conversation. Do you know which world leader he's talking about there? I think he made that conversation up. I think that's a fairly typical uh, Trump thing to do. Uh, uh, because it makes it sound very dramatic and, and uh, proving his point. Uh, but just because that conversation is made up, again, people should not think that he's making up the point about withdrawing or, or that he doesn't particularly care what Russia do does to those who don't spend adequately on their own defense. Uh, I think this is, this is exactly uh, his view of alliances. They're totally transactional. It's like you add up every day how much did you spend, how much did we spend. And I tell you, the, what it shows about Trump's view of alliances is if he's willing to knife NATO, he's willing to knife the relationship with Israel, with Japan, with South Korea. There's not a U.S. alliance out there that's safe with that kind of attitude. Well, can you listen to what Senator Marco Rubio said about this? Because I think this is a key point on how Republican senators and just lawmakers generally are treating Trump's comments, not as threats, but... Well, here's how he put it to Jake yesterday. Well, that's not what happened, and that's not how I view that statement. I mean, he was talking about something, a story that he talked about happened in the past. By the way, Donald Trump was president, and he didn't pull us out of NATO. You know, in fact, American troops were stationed throughout Europe as they are today. They were then as well. I mean, he's saying it's not really a, a, a threat in his view. Well, he should have been sitting next to me at the NATO summit in 2018 when I, I was called up by Trump to his seat at the table. And he said, well, should we do it? And I said, go up to the line, but don't go over it. I went back to my seat with Mike Pompeo and Jim Mattis, who said, what's he going to do? And I didn't know. That's how close it was. And I would say to Marco, for whom I have an awful lot of respect, uh, if you don't think Trump is serious about getting out of NATO, then why did you recently co-sponsor legislation requiring approval by two-thirds of the House and the Senate before a president can withdraw from NATO? Is there some other president or would-be president out there that you think is going to withdraw other than Donald Trump? I'd certainly like to hear that. Ambassador Bolton, as always, thank you for coming on tonight. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, not just those NATO comments, is drawing more ire for every for other things he says.